Hey guys, DMZ TV here. I'm your host, Travis. And your co-host, Megan. And today we're going to be talking about Syrian hookahs and Zomo tobacco. All right, guys, we have a really special episode because we have our friend Megan all the way from Jacksonville, Florida. And with Megan, she brought us two awesome Syrian hookahs to test out and to show off. What brand of a uh, hookah are, are we smoking out of today? So these are the two notorious Naras hookahs. Ooh, I've been hearing about them forever because they've been around for a really long time, haven't they? Yeah, uh, all the way back from like possibly the early 80s. Um, I know our Syrian marble Nara dates back to the 80s. These ones are a bit newer, um, but they're still really great quality pipes. And you collect you collect these Nara Ross pipes, correct? Yeah, they're a bit more difficult to obtain now, which I like because it gives us that edge in our collection, but once you get your hands on them, there's no going back. So why are, why are they rare? Because we have pipes coming out from Egypt and all over the Middle East, but what's what's the difference between these Syrian pipes and that, that makes them hard to obtain these days? So with the Narases, uh, there was a lot of war, conflict, the factory actually got bombed, the owner fled, stopped production, no one was able to like revamp the so warehouse or anything like that. So whatever was out with distributors, that's all that was left. So normally they would be like 60, 70, $80 for certain models. And now they can go from 200, 600 and up. Wow, that is insane. Talk about appreciation and value. <laughs> right? Now what I always liked hearing about, and now that I've tested them out myself, is that Syrian pipes have a very, they have a very special draw to them. Yeah, everyone talks about like, the restrictive draw like oh a Syrian pipes like super restricted it's very tight and a lot of vendors and owners always try and replicate it but it's very difficult to do um HJ has a Syrian inspiration KM has a Syrian inspiration I own a Syrian print from KM and it's much more restricted I never gravitate towards it I always go back to like the authentic real one um, just because the draw is perfect and I, I, I agree with you I, I used it last night and I couldn't believe it I was blowing just as big of clouds with the Syrian as I was with any other open pipe now what I want to do is show some of the ports just because we are talking about restriction and we're going to show why we're talking about that so if you can see the ports right there and right there, you can see that they look really restricted. The purge is a little smaller, but no, it still hits really, really nicely. So I'm excited to smoke with these and I'm excited to try out some new mixes with Zomo tobacco. So why don't we get packing? All right, guys, let's see what setups we're working with today. Megan, what do you got running on your side? So I have the Eggerman Bohemian Czech Boho base with the Naros nickel plated solid staff, the Alpaca Zara Surrey collab bowl, Provost with two superior cocos and a thunder hose. And you have. Oh, that's a great setup. <laughs> I'm working with the also the same Eggerman Boho. I got a brass Naros crosshatch with the new Liberty Mini Apache, the Provost, and two Superior char uh, Cocos. Let's see how this looks. Let's do it. Mmm, it's so good. What do you have in your bowl? I have -wise. the Zomo Secret of Babylon mixed with Black Lava Honeydew. Oh, Honeymoon. That oh, is, Honeymoon. Honeymoon is <laughs> off. That is a great flavor. How, how did you find them mixing together? They mix very well together. Um, I know a lot of tobaccos, it's like a bit difficult because they each have different heat sensitivities, but this one pairs really well together. Oh, I, I definitely agree because I'm also doing <laughs> Zomo tobacco with Black Lava. So on my side, I have Zomo Blue Caribbean mixed with Black Lava Dominican Guava. 
And anybody who's smoked Blue Caribbean, if you haven't, check out our reviews on it. Uh, it also, it has pineapple, coconut, and guava with menthol. So the Dominican guava adds just a little more kick of <laughs> guava to it and it's just performing really great. Why don't we take some more pulls and see how, see how it looks. And I'm really impressed with the Sapiro Cocoa Pulls. I know they're not released yet, but I like to smoke hot. I know you like to smoke hot and they maintain their heat really well and I don't have to ash them as much, which is really nice. I, I love it because they just perform so well and they're so big right off the burner that I don't have to play with them until way, way later in the session. So any cold that I don't have to play with, I'm happy with. Yeah, because who could simply just sit down, relax, socialize, enjoy? Absolutely. Less cold changes, less messing with your bowl means more times relaxing and hanging with your friends. So, Travis, I gotta ask, restriction-wise, how does it compare to the Who, Prometheus? What are your thoughts? Uh, honestly, I thought it was gonna be super restricted, but I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I'm blowing out great clouds and I don't have any tightness on the draw. So I definitely think it's something that you should have in your collection. I understand why you collect them now. Yeah. <laughs> so Meg, do you have any last words, any shout outs before we uh, we head out? I would like to thank DMZ Crew for having me here, um, opening up their home. And guys, don't forget to leave a like, comment if you have any questions, and hit that subscribe button. Until the next time, guys, DMZ TV out. All right, so we got to do this final showdown to see who has the biggest clouds. Challenge accepted. Alright, alright Meg, you're the guest here so I'm going to give you the title. Or they can leave us a comment and see who has the bigger clouds. Sound off in the comment section guys, let us know who has the biggest clouds here. And again, thank you.